the longer the lever, the more leverage I will have, right? So I have three fundamental levers in the spine. I have the cervical arch, the thoracic arch, and the lumbar arch. So I have these three, that so-called S-curve. If I go to effect, it's best that I isolate one arch or the other rather than just try to take the entirety of the back, which a lot of people do. So if I'm attacking any of the arches and I choke the arch, for example, I want to bend his neck backwards, he's resisting, I push and I put my other hand here, now really I'm occupying most of the flexion zone. What I want to do instead is I want to not brace the neck, but I want to go right to the base of the arch. Right? So I have the maximum amount of leverage, the longest lever possible to work against him. Similarly, if I'm pulling him and I occupy the arch, I choke it, it's much stronger for him if he looks up. If I go right to the top of the arch and I pull, then I'm going to have more screen on the neck. You're going to feel your neck vibrate. The second thing I need to do, aside from opening up that arch, is I try not to push with both. Right? So if he's like that and he's resisting, and I push with both, then in effect I'm turning him into a propeller, and then the point of rotation becomes the center. Right? But if I stop one side, push the other like a lever, then I have a true lever, right? Push like that, and right? that's what I want to have. Same thing here. If I try to push and pull, the hand here often braces it. But if I you know, just poke my fingers into his throat, cause some pain, and then wrench it down, that's going to give me more leverage, right? So any of the three arches play with touching and pushing over versus pushing with both. If I take thoracic, I try not to push with both. I try to stop one, push with just the other. So this one just becomes solid. Or the inverse. This becomes like a wall, and this one pushes him under like that. That's good, too. Belt, I'm a big fan. I just grab it, right? I can push the guy over the fulcrum, or I can push the fulcrum, the, the sort of the lower base under a high fulcrum like that, right? It's up to you. But I try to avoid moving both because when I move both, I'm making the point of rotation in the center. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If that's comfortable, all I would like you to do, even if I'm going to make um, any sort of fulcrum, any, if I'm gonna use this as my ultimate fulcrum, as my coordination gets better, I can arrive there. So I can hit, bam, stop it and drive over. So rather than go, like this where I'm forcing continuously with both like a scissor, one arrives, then the other one pushes. It, it arrives hard, but it stops, right? Like that. You'll have more effect. Or here, right? Or here, like that. Any position. I could poke and stop and then pull over that rather than push with both. If you just push with both, he wiggles out of the middle, then you don't get as much effect. But if I push and stop and then pull the other one over, I have much more effect. Same thing with a plexus. Guys will pull and they punch through, but because both are moving, his body twists off to the side more and the force escapes. If I punch, get inside, grab that heart, and then pull him over, it'll buckle him much faster and with control. Does that make sense? So you try to play it first with pushing with both, which is inefficient, stopping one and pushing with the other, which is better, and then if that gets comfortable, slap into position, hit into position, and push over.